this is Kim from ECT TV, and this is episode 10. This week I am going to teach you how to make something with a somewhat unconventional material. And if you've been watching some of the past episodes, you know that I actually really love using unconventional material. The reason why is um, I really think it gives you so much of a bigger opportunity to be able to express yourself and really show your personality in your jewelry making. Not everybody you run into is wearing a necklace made out of hardware and I, I think it just gives you this great opportunity to really show your personality, make a funky piece of jewelry, and then also, the more that you learn how to make jewelry, the more you'll be able to incorporate different types of techniques together to make really unique jewelry. So, you know, as we go along in this video series, you may want to make the tutorial I'm showing you, or you may really just want to maybe add some of the other things you've learned along the way as well to your jewelry pieces, and I would love if you did that. And in fact, if you would like to share photos, you can put them on my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash emerging creatively tutorials, and I'd just love to see what you're making. All right, let's get started. Before we actually get started on the tutorial part of this episode, I want to give you some ideas of where to find hardware. I am a big fan of upcycling materials that maybe previously were unuseful. So if you go into your garage, you may find all kinds of washers that I don't know really why people have so many washers, but they do. When I first started making hardware jewelry years ago, I told my brother I was doing this. He went into his uh, garage and started pulling out all kinds of washers. I'm like, well, you know, don't you need these? He's like, no. I'm like, well, why do we have them? So um, you might find them there. You might find them in a toolbox. Where I ended up getting a lot of my supplies, um, and I, as you probably know, I made jewelry to sell for a very long time and I don't really do that so much anymore but my hardware jewelry was really popular I actually went to the Habitat for Humanity Restore and they had a whole hardware section that I would just go through and get you know nuts and bolts and washers and that sort of thing and just stock up there um, you can go to the hardware store and buy things if you want um, you might like I said, find them in your garage or your shed, your toolbox. So, and actually, when you start doing this, you you might find cool washers just laying on the ground along the way. I'm going to show you how to take care of any metal allergies that you may have with this type of jewelry because you probably don't want to just put old hardware against your skin or your clothes. So, I will show so, you that. after you've found yourself some hardware, and you might not have quite the variety that I do, which is so fine. You could actually make a whole bracelet with just, you know, washers, or these are some square washers, and I'm sorry, I don't know the exact terminology. Um, if you have any sort of metal allergy, and even if you don't, you're going to want to sort of seal this the hardware and especially if you find I used to find like some cool like more rusted kind of patinaed hardware that I wanted to leave it that way um, so you want to use something to kind of seal it so what I use is this Midas finish seal lacquer um, and basically you just apply it to your hardware and you let it dry. I think it says you can let it, it dries within 10 minutes, but I let it dry longer than that. So I would just maybe go ahead and seal one side, let it dry, and then flip it and seal the other side. And, um, and that will protect your skin against the hardware. 
I've also heard of people saying that when they want to seal things, like a lot of people have metal allergies and they can only wear sterling silver or gold, that sort of thing, that if they got um, something cheaper, they would just take clear nail polish and seal with that. I don't know how that works really. I think that that would probably, you know, eventually kind of crack off or maybe even turn yellow, but that might be an option as well. But this is from Rio Grande and um, it, I'll, this is a big bottle, but it lasts a very, very, very long time. So I highly suggest doing this before you start making your jewelry. Alright, so for this project you of course need hardware, which you've already sealed in one of the ways I suggested. And you're going to need two pairs of pliers, so I'm going to have my bent nose pliers and chain nose pliers. And then you need jump rings. So most of the smaller washers you can use 7 millimeter jump rings with. Um, some of these larger ones you're going to need to have 9 millimeter jump rings. And then if you have even bigger, like bigger meaning wider here on your washer because we're going to be putting a jump ring around you may find that you need even bigger jump rings so um, if you know you don't have big bigger jump rings and you don't want to get them just make sure you have smaller hardware and you'll also need a clasp which I'm going to use a lobster class for this project. So to get started, we're just going to start designing our bracelet. I like to not just use different hardware, but sometimes layer it. For example, these washers, and again, I can't tell you exactly what they're called, are pokey. They look like suns, I think they're cool. But you probably don't want to just put them, you know, on your skin. It might scratch you. But if you layer it on a washer, it looks even cooler and it protects your skin. So just sort of go ahead and start laying out your design. Sort of mixing up your hardware. And I just have a ruler here so I have a general idea. Um, th this isn't exact because there's going you're going to be adding jump rings, so it will change a little bit, but it just gives you a little bit of an idea. And this actually brings me to um, something that people ask me sometimes, and that's kind of how do you design jewelry? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. One is, you know, of course, sketching out a design and then going and getting your materials. But then sometimes you have materials, and especially something like this, where the materials themselves are your inspiration. And in those cases, a lot of times, I do exactly what I'm doing right now, which is just have my materials laid out and sort of just start laying out the design. And sometimes you don't eat... You know, you might not even want to do that. You might just start making your jewelry and go from there. So, I'm going to switch this. Alright. So, I kind of have my design here. I can get rid of the excess. So, now it's really just a simple matter of putting this necklace together with jump rings. So, in case you need a reminder, I'll show you how to open a jump ring. So first you find the opening in the jump ring, which on smaller jump rings it's sometimes hard to see, but you can usually see it pretty well in a 9mm jump ring, which is what I'm using. So find that opening and then you're going to hold your jump ring with your two pairs of pliers with that opening in the middle. And then with one pair of pliers, you're going to go toward you and you're just going to stay straight. The other pair, you're going to go away. And you're not going to lose the circle shape. So just do this. 
So you can see the jump ring is open, but if you look at it from the side, it's really still a circle. And then I like to open a bunch of jump rings at one time because it's easier that way. Um, but I'm going to show you quickly while I'm at it how to close the jump ring as well. So after you would add your hardware, you just do the opposite of opening it. And then I like to go past the point that it would be closed and kind of go back and forth. And you'll, and you maybe even heard that, you'll hear it or you'll feel it a lot of times snap into place. So that is how you open it and close a jump ring. So we're just going to go ahead and open a bunch of jump rings now so they are ready. So I think I mistakenly referred to these as 9mm. These are 7mm and then I'm going to need a couple 9mm too. And then you can always make open more as you need them. So now we're going to start putting this together. You can start at one end and work your way to the other. Or sometimes I like to start in the middle and work my way out. Um, so however you feel comfortable. If you kind of have it laid out, you know, it doesn't really matter. So we're just going to take one of these open jump rings. And again, this is a 7 millimeter, and you can see this is one of the smaller washers, and I have it layered with another washer. And you just put it on the jump ring. Oh! <laughs> Sometimes these things happen. Alright. Put it on the jump ring. And then we're going to close the jump ring. And then you're going to add a second one because we're going to then attach each segment together. With another jump ring. So just continue doing that, adding jump rings. This is bigger, so I'm going to need one of my bigger jump rings here. It's a 9mm one. And again, we're adding two to each set of hardware here. I don't know if this will fit, but it looks like it will. Sometimes you just have to have to try it. All right, so you get the idea. Just continue to add jump rings, two jump rings to each separate segment here. Now each segment has two jump rings, one on each side. So now we just attach them all. So I'm just using seven millimeter jump rings here. You could use four millimeters for this part um, if you prefer. So you're simply going to take a jump ring on one side of one segment and attach it to a jump ring on the next segment and then close it. And then just continue to attach all of them. Alright, just to show you something that I just ran into, um, on this bigger uh, uh, washer here, I had used one of my uh, nine millimeter jump rings, and on this side it was fine, um, but on the other side, for whatever reason, it didn't work when I tried to add a, the jump ring to attach it to the rest. 
So I am going to just go ahead and use a larger jump ring. And I'll probably change the other side too so it's the same. And then I'll have more room to attach. Alright, so I've attached all the different segments. And one thing you just have to watch out for when you are attaching them is to make sure that you don't twist, get the jump rings twisted up and get your bracelet twisted so that when you put it on it actually lays the right way, especially if you're going to have layered pieces like I have here. And finally, to finish off the bracelet, oh, and I tried on the bracelet and I had to take a couple segments off. So the jump rings do add some length. So just check before you finish your bracelet to see how it fits and if you need to remove or add any more of the hardware segments. Now I'm just going to take on one end a couple of these 7mm jump rings and add them so that my lobster class clasp has something to hold on to and then I'm going to take another jump ring on the other side and attach my clasp and here's a good example I kind of messed up this jump ring it got out of shape it's no longer a circle so rather than mess with it I'm just going to get a new jump ring and try again is the bracelet. Well, I hope you liked learning how to make your hardware bracelet. I would love to see pictures, so if you do make one, take pictures and post it to the Emerging Creatively Tutorials Facebook page. And remember, if you come to my website, which is KimberlyKohler.com, I'll put a link below this video, there will be this tutorial in photographs, um, as well as some ex little extra information. And if you would like this tutorial in PDF form or future tutorials, make sure you sign up for my email newsletter while you're there because I send out each episode via PDF to all my subscribers each week. Alright, I'll see you next week. Have a great week.